What do you build your life on? Don't get too close to lions. And a voicemail from Donald Trump. This is Gallery Church Online. Yes, hello everybody, welcome to Gallery Church Online. I'm Pastor Andy and I'm so delighted that all of you, any of you, have tuned in for today's service. I believe in faith, be a real blessing to you and really build your spirit and feed your soul. Today we're continuing our unusual series um, because this is an incredibly unusual year and we're going into an amazingly unusual Christmas service at Gallery Church. We've got Kerry speaking and a new song from Gallery Church worship team. So a blessed morning for sure. Now in the spirit of unusual, what happens next? This is Chow. He's about 14 years old. He doesn't like the cold as much as the tigers, do you? But he's choosing to be outside, and if it gets really cold, he can go into his den in the back. She looks a little bit too close to a lion there for my liking. That is a bit too close. I wonder what could happen. We'll find out later on. Now, in the spirit of unusual, wouldn't it be odd if you checked your voicemail in front of everybody in case it was a private message or something like that? Well, every now and again at Gallery Church, and we've not done it for a long time, we check the voicemail of Gallery Church on the Sunday service. So I thought, hey, it's an unusual thing. Let's do it. So let's check the voicemail of Gallery Church in a little section I like to call Checking the voicemail of Gallery Church. Do 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 do. Insert jingle here. Anyway, let's check the first message on the Gallery Church answer phone voicemail. Here we go. Who is it? Okay, this is Donald J. Trump here. Just want to say a message for Pastor Andy. He's great. He's a really beautiful person. He's a really great people. In fact, he's in my top five people, along with King Young Un. What? My favorite part of the Bible? All of it. I'd say all of it. It's so good that I could have written some of it. Mm. Pastor Andy, I'm just doing the best job search ever. The greatest yeah. job search ever yeah. seen. Yeah. UK government told me I should just retrain, but their website, it's too puny for my awesome username. Yeah. Not sure how to use these interwebs. I'd normally ask the Russians to help me. Oh, I wouldn't. It depends. I don't know. I, I don't know. What does it matter? I'm magnificent. This goodbye is from the greatest speech giver God ever created. <laughs> Donald Trump there, obviously, leaving a message for us. Some nice words at the beginning, and then uh, a lot of time to say not a lot. Some people do that, don't they? Should we check who's next on the gallery? Answer phone. Hi, a message for Pastor Andy. It's Pastor Stephen Furtick here. Yeah. I'm just looking for some advice for the global strategy of Elevation Church. Again. Also, how do you keep your arms so muscly when you can't get to the gym in this season? Yeah. I gotta look after the gun show so I can choke slam the word to the people. Come on, Lord, you're moving this mountain. <laughs> All right, my faith's already being built there. Stephen Furtick, I'll get back to him later about the global strategy stuff there. Um, I often have to repeat the same thing a few times so he gets it, <laughs> Stephen. All right, let's have a look at what looks like the final message, number three, uh, on the GC voicemail today. Hi, Gallery Church. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. here. Just want to recommend the new Sainsbury's advert to you. Yes. Have you seen it? I love it. God bless you. God bless you. Short and sweet. Dr. Martin Luther King, I love it too. What a great advert. Thanks for the message, however you did that. That's amazing. Some people moaning about the Sainsbury's advert, aren't they? Saying, I don't relate to it. I don't relate to it. But there didn't seem to be any problem when these adverts were happening. I relate to a carrot. I'm so like a carrot me, honestly. Anyway, let's move on. What's happening in the life of Gallery Church this week? Well, it is the drive through Christmas service. We are getting ready for it. We are so excited. It's not this week, obviously, it's on the 20th, and we're gonna need you to book in as soon as possible so we can actually do more events. We know the landscape is changing, but at the moment, everything's good with the government and the council, with us doing this event with the police and the fire department too. Everything is good to go forward, even if we stay in lockdown. So that's really encouraging. It's an actual Christmas event you can get to this year. Not only that, there may be many families and people who wanna come along and be blessed this Christmas time. It's gonna be a superb, 
gallery Christmas service as good as they always are and I encourage you to begin to get some enthusiasm and excitement for this. This is going to be the biggest event we've ever done financially, faith-wise, in terms of potential reach to meet many people with the good news of the Christmas message. How good is that? We need you guys as well to volunteer. Can I recommend if you don't have a car, then definitely get on team. That way it'll be much easier for you to come along and be part of it. There'll be lots of jobs, but just get yourself primed and ready thinking, what can I do? I'm ready on the 20th, I have booked the whole day off. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna bring some friends, I'm gonna serve on team just getting really excited. Let's have some real fun at the end of this pretty difficult year, a drive-in Christmas service for everyone for this city. So brilliant. This week we have gallery dinners. It returns, it's pretty regular now, becoming quite a feature of Gallery Church. That pleases me, community is being built, and not just fake community, but real community. The dinners group I was part of uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had some real precious tender moments of ministry, of honesty, joy and laughter, and it was great. Can I encourage you, whatever your fears and worries about getting into small group, put them to one side and just have some faith that God's plan for you in community, in Christian community, is a good one. Gallery dinners this week. Also, I keep going on about it, but prayer is so important. Battlefront, is it happening again tomorrow morning, 6.30? Be there. This week we had some fantastic prayer times. Last Monday was particularly good. I'm recording this on Thursday, so I don't know how Friday's gonna go. I'm sure it's gonna be wonderful. The Lord will definitely be with us, and there'll be some faithful saints praying and believing. Can I just leave you with this thought, that any peace or blessing you have ever enjoyed or you're enjoying right now has been fought for. It was fought for by soldiers as we had Remembrance Sunday. It was fought for by prayer warriors. It was fought for by leaders who lived sacrificially. It was fought for by Jesus on the cross. Any blessing we have now is because someone fought for us. I'd encourage you, if you can get up once, twice, get going and just begin to pray for the blessing and goodness of yourself and others. Battlefront, 6.30, Monday, Friday, next week. Join in. 2020, going crazy. Just when you think you're able to pull a few sentences together and, and, and begin to work out what's happening in this crazy year, well then, life just comes along and hits a Greg's bag in your face. Been around a long time um, and as a result, it does take quite a long time to make change even with the best one in the world. That is still one of my all-time favorite video clips. I think in the first year of starting Gallery Church, we showed it, and we show it annually every year. I think it's about to blow up. It feels like the right kind of temperature now for that video to go viral, viral. I think it's so funny. But just remember, you saw it here first before it was fashionable. So good. I love him. He was coherent pulled together what was happening, finished a sentence, and then something else came. 2020 feels like that at the moment. You might just be able to pull some stuff together, but we just have no idea what's coming next, what's happening, but we do know someone who does. In the book of Daniel, Daniel declares God as someone who is able to reveal the mysteries. And in Acts, we hear that it's up to God to reveal the secrets and epochs of the times that we live in when and he chooses. So for me, we're never gonna know everything, but those scriptures encourage me that God knows and we worship a God who knows. And as we go into a worship time now, I encourage you to give your life, to open your heart and to follow God, the one who does know, even when we can't make sense of all this or when we begin to and something else happens to us. So as we worship now, remember, you're not worshiping in circumstances that God knew nothing about. He knew this season. Sometimes we can't comprehend what on earth is going on. But God knows, and we worship the one who does know. You know he loves you, even when we're finding it hard in our minds. He reaches out to you and ministers to you. And I pray as we worship now, I pray that begins to happen. Holy Spirit, I pray you move over people's lives, restore souls and bring vision and rivers of living water would come as people bring a sacrifice of praise in the most unusual way and the end of the most unusual year. Father, we still worship you because you are worthy. Amen. Worship. 
There is no one like you. There is no one beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is no Beside you, open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and leave me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and leave me in your love to those around me. Yes, Lord. Amen. What a wonderful worship time. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you that you are the rock. So good. Gallery Church worship doing a wonderful job there as ever. So good. Lord, thank you for your presence with us as well. Amazing. You know, he's the rock in all the circumstances. That's amazing for where we're at right now, isn't it? Hey, we've got more ministry now. We've got Kerry Harris bringing the word. She is power, flames. <laughs> this message, I know that she brings honesty, integrity, breakthrough and joy. I just believe God will do something as you listen to this message. Open your notebooks, open your hearts, and get ready to feed in the Word of God. Over to Kerry. Light, space, zest, that's God. So with him on my side, I'm fearless, afraid of no one and nothing. That is not the opening scene of a Netflix banger. No, that is the opener from Psalm 27 in the Bible. In the first lockdown, my husband and I watched a lot of Netflix series and movies. And for those that know me previous to meeting Ian, I had a television the size of a thumbnail. The biggest confession I had to make to my movie mad, digital mad husband was that I didn't really watch telly at all. It's probably not fair to say I nearly lost him, but the devastation lasted for some time. He mentioned it quite a lot at friends' houses when I met his mum and dad, and I think he brought it up again recently. Um, Anyway, that's in the past, and in lockdown, he has managed to drag me into his heathen lifestyle of watching many in action, fighty type films set in medieval times with big battles. You don't really know who's the goody, who's the baddie. I mean, I've really changed. On, on one night two weeks ago, I let out a loud, get him! The positive thing that has come from this is that it roused in me a bit of a, a warrior spirit, you know, during these times, get up and go again. When I have a difficult customer at work, I find myself pondering on things like, what would Khaleesi say? And how did Uhtred, son of Uhtred, get around this one? If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, it's not the main part of the message. <laughs> though I was a right Larry Loner before I met Ian, and even though I was sometimes sad to be alone, my relationship with God became really strong. And I learned something that has kept me sane in each difficult season of life since that Jesus is a firm foundation and that his goodness is enough. When my life fell empty, he poured his love in. And in those years on the outside, I was a Larry, but on the inside, I was full and overflowing in the things of God. I identify with David when he said, light, zest, space, that is God. When you read the whole poem, it's an exuberant declaration of faith in God. The poet, David, the shepherd boy, the giant slayer, the worshipper, the head of the king's army, and eventually King David himself, had his fair shares of ups and downs, triumphs, victories, famines, generally mad times like 2020. But at the end of the poem, in verse 13 to 14, he says this, I'm sure now that I will see God's goodness in this earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. Stay with God. And the title of the message this morning is Stay with God. Let's pray. 
Lord, I just want to thank you for every single person tuned into Gallery Church this morning. I want to thank you, Lord, that you want to draw us closer to you, nearer to you, God. And I pray, Lord, that this would not be my message, my words, God, but that it would be your words on overflow, God, your Holy Spirit, that would break through in people's lives this morning. We thank you. We praise you, God. You are an awesome God, and we give this morning to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So firstly, I just want to encourage you that if this is your first time tuning into Gallery and you're only at the beginning of exploring the idea of God, this one is for you too. See, to stay with God, we all have to begin with God. If we read Psalm 27 in the New King James Version, verse 1 puts it like this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. In other words, my saviour. Now, Andy and and Rach, alongside my biological family, have been my great encouragers. Their love for me has been significant in my life. And at times, I know the prayers that they've prayed for me have changed the course of my life, literally. But they are not my salvation. My mum and dad are absolute heroes. My brothers and their wives, their children, they're the joy of my life. And my husband, Ian, and my son, Judah, are the most precious gifts but they are not my salvation. My best mate, Becky, she's so unique. She's like everyone's friend and I have to share her with everyone. But she's, you know, she's so amazing, but she's not my salvation. Early on in the first lockdown, I felt alone. I've been spoilt with so many wonderful people around me for so long, but when stripped back, I miss seeing everyone. I felt disappointed that people were not calling me more, not going out for walks with me more. I became inward looking, not outward looking. I just felt so vulnerable in my mind. Oh, come on. You felt like that too. I'm not a bad person. I just missed the point. I fell off the boat. But I realised I'd been falling for some time. Let's be real. You've been upset with people in lockdown. No? Maybe just me then. But for the sake of those that need a breakthrough this morning, I want to remind you that people, no matter how good they are, how great they are, no other person is your salvation but God. I've had to learn to turn off social media. I've had to discipline my mind with God's word. I've had to bring worship and the tangible presence of God into my home. I've had to declare that I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord. I'm confident as seasons change, his faithfulness remains. I've had to get on my knees and ask God to forgive me for making everything else and everyone else my salvation and not him. See, you will struggle to see the goodness of God in your life if you don't recognise that it's Jesus. Jesus is your salvation. You will struggle to forgive others if you don't recognise that Jesus is your salvation. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. And again, I say, stay with God. I don't want to be that sheep on the outside that the wolves devour. I've been there. I've done that. I've joined the pity party that becomes the bitter party. I've blamed everyone else, been around the block, put my trust in people when I should have put my trust in God. I know some of you are crumbling because when I've prayed, I've felt it, I've seen it, God show me. Stuck in relationships you don't want to be in. You needed something during this time to comfort you. You made people your salvation and you're literally now twisted, wondering how can I get out of this? Can I start by inviting you to acknowledge perhaps for the first time, maybe the hundredth time like me, that God is your salvation. You can come to him today, you're not stupid. We're all doing it. We're all repeating mistakes, having to get up again. Someone needs to know that there is no hole too deep that you have dug that Jesus can't reach down and pull you out of. Don't worry. Just stay with God. Philosophies that suggest that another human being can be your saviour is one that will crumble. It's a philosophy built on shaky sand because every one of us has a breaking point So how can we put our total faith in a human being when every single one of us is broken in one way or another? When the wind blows hard enough, we all fall. We all experience fear and anxiety. So how? How can another human be your salvation? 
Stop putting pressure on people to save you. When God paid the price for you, he's proven time and time and time again that he's with you. Stay with God. Perhaps that person never meant to let you down, but the wind blew. They were facing their own difficult storm. Perhaps they couldn't be there for you. Maybe they were too tired facing their own battles. The Bible tells us that a wise man built his house upon the rock. And then the Bible also tells us in Psalm 18 that God is our rock. Only he is your strength. Only he is our fortress. And here is an interesting one. Only he is your deliverer. Stay with God. You will struggle to find peace if you're looking for it in approval of man. You will struggle to let go of hurt. And if you pile on the expectations on other human beings, stay with God. Perhaps you realise this morning for the first time that it makes no sense to put your trust in humans. Not because you're annoyed with them or annoyed with people, but because we all have a breaking point and arguably, in that case, a need for a true saviour. When I was 24, I said a prayer a little bit like this. God, I need you. Come into my life. Please help me. Amen. I sense this incredible peace and security. And I'm still me. I still make mistakes. I still get sad. And I sometimes get hurt. But I know the benefit of a sound mind when I stay with God. If you're trying to figure out how to make your way back to God let alone trying to stay with him. Here's some advice that helped me during this time. I've been spending time in God's presence. I've been putting on my worship music again. I've been making as many prayer meetings as I can. I've been attending gallery dinner groups on Wednesday nights. I I want to call out friends, Lisa and Ali, who've been reaching out to me and praying for me consistently week in, week out incredible see the church is full of imperfect people that are alive in Jesus that are alive in God he makes them alive and he's their, he is their salvation too get around godly people be with people that are going to be kind to you that are going to encourage you and sometimes kindness is a challenge sometimes kindness is come on get back up again Be around those people. Let God be your salvation. Stay with God. Stay with godly people. I don't care about ticks in boxes or boasting about me at all. And I don't want to come across that way this morning at all. But Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be. And I often have to stop and ask myself, where are you, Kez? God's there. Where are you? You know, I've had to ask myself on the days that I've struggled, have I been showing up and meeting with the people of God? Because that's where Jesus is. God doesn't lie. We show up, he shows up. You know what happens when his presence becomes your main gaze? Is that in the midst of 2020, you will discover the true meaning of what the poet describes in Hebrew as Nahum. It talks about gazing upon the beauty of the Lord. It's the pleasantness and delight the fullness of God. It's where the name Naomi comes from. To know God, to know his presence is to become delighted when it doesn't make sense. And in the book of Ruth, in the Bible, we find a lady called Naomi. Her story is one of ups and downs. And at one point, she's been living in a foreign land where famine breaks out and her husband and her two sons die. She decides to return home, but her daughter, and she tries to push away her daughter, daughters-in-law and send them back to their homes in Moab but her daughter-in-law Ruth refuses to leave her as much as she tries to push her away her daughter will not leave when they decided to go back Naomi's family in home back to Naomi's family and, ha- and homeland people were welcoming them home and calling Naomi's name Naomi Naomi and she turned to them and she said don't call me Naomi which means pleasantness of God call me Mara Call me bitter. As the story goes on, we find out that Ruth finds a husband called Boaz. They marry and they have a son called Obed. And the book of Ruth was written in a time of spiritual decay. And yet in the midst of that, God was still working out his plan for Naomi and for Ruth. 
And from Obed, we get Jesse. From Jesse, we get David. And we know that from the line of David, we get Jesus. So if you feel right now empty, like you're decaying, bitter, and even kind words and encouragement, there's nothing that can lift you up, I want to remind you, stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. Stay with God. He's working all things together for your good. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you, God, for such a great message and food for us today. Amazing. Our salvation is found in Jesus. Wow. If that's spoken to you today, can I encourage you to pray along with me right now? I'm just going to pray a simple prayer, a few lines, encourage you to repeat them back out in your front room, wherever you're watching this, in your car waiting for something else, or just say them in your heart. And I just believe that God will come into your life and bless you so incredibly. Say these words. Father God, I acknowledge that I need a rock and a saviour. Father God, I declare that Jesus is my saviour. I will follow his ways and his teachings. Please come into my life. Amen. Amen. If you said a prayer, that prayer today, you say any prayer you want, but if you said that prayer today, please do get in touch with us. We have an email address that you can get in touch with us on, or you can go onto the website gallerychurch.co.uk. You can click the follow Jesus button that's on there as well. But right now, we're just going to take a moment of rest, prayer and reflection. Amen. Well, what a wonderful version of Gallery Church this week. It's been so excellent. Great worship, great word. The Lord with us. Um, I know some of you are screaming at the telly right now saying, what did happen next? So here it is. What happened next? This is Chow. He's about 14 years old. He doesn't like the cold as much as the tigers, do you? But he's choosing to be outside. And if it gets really cold, he can go into his den in the back. Right, Chow? Right, Chow? Look at that. She was far too close. You don't mess with lions. Have you ever seen that clip where the lion does a little kind of bit of a sneeze and then looks so thug life? This one. <laughs> I love that. It's like he knew exactly what he was doing. I'll just prank you. I'll just prank you. I've got you. Anyway, thanks for being with us today. I've got some voicemails to return. I'm not sure what I'm going to say to President Trump, bless him, in a job search, but uh, I've got some chat with Stephen Furtick to have, so um, I'm out of here. God bless you all. Thanks so much for being with us today. We'll see you online very soon. Okay, let's check the first. <laughs> oh, Stephen. Oh, Stephen. The final message here on the GC voicemail. <laughs> Who's next on the... <laughs> I love it too, Dr. N oh. Okay, all right, 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 all right. Thumbs over back, Dad. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Put him to... Uh, <laughs> I love him, he was, you're worshiping. Sometimes we can't comprehend.